Truth on Valve here, and today I'm keeping you updated with the latest. I'm going to be talking about all of the national and international warnings that we've been seeing these past few days, as well as tell you the bigger agenda, and we're also going to be going over Brexit and the whole situation with that as well. But as you can see right now, I'm here at the FEMA website, and we're going to be talking about FEMA and some of the very cryptic things that FEMA has been doing, because it's important that you see exactly what time it is. Now I'm at their emergency alert system. System, and I've done a video on this covering this back in February of the National Emergency Alert System test that they've done. But as we see, they're doing another one. And this one was conducted on Wednesday, June 15th. But not only that, they've been conducting series of tests, not just on June 15th and not just back in February, but all throughout the year 2016. We've been seeing FEMA conducting all of these test runs and all of these emergency drills and all of these test drills, not to mention the Cascadia Rising drill that was done in the Pacific Northwest just a couple of weeks ago. And the question you should be thinking about with all conspiracies aside is why are they doing all of these tests and why are they conducting all of these tests on such a national grand level such as they're doing and why are they doing it at the time that they're doing it at and that is something we should be thinking about but it goes on to talk about on their information in which you can look below it says the nationwide emergency alert system post test information and it says on november 9th 2011 at 2 p.m eastern standard time the first ever nationwide emergency alert system or the eas test was conducted conducted across the U.S. and its territories. The purpose of this test was to assess the readiness and effectiveness of the system for the president to address the public during times of extreme national emergency. EAS participants across the countries participated in the test. But has it ever occurred to you or have you ever wondered why they just started to do this now in 2011 onward during the time of the Barack Obama administration? Why weren't they doing this during the time of Bush? Why weren't they doing this during the time of Clinton? Why weren't they doing this during the times of those presidencies? Why are they waiting until now to do all of these things? Could they be getting ready for something? Let's keep going. It says FEMA originated an emergency action notification or EAN simultaneously to 61 primary entry point stations that serve as national level relay points. These PEP stations rebroadcasted the message in their coverage area to local primary stations and other monitoring stations. The test was not a pass or fail measure, but an exercise to proactively identify strengths and opportunities for improvements of the current EAS. And that's exactly what it does. And of course, the test message is seen and heard by millions of Americans. But the question you should be thinking about is what are they really doing? What are they getting ready for? But that's not all that FEMA's getting ready for because I'm here at Vice and it says FEMA contractor predicts social unrest caused by 395% food price spikes. And it says the U.S. national security industry is planning for the impact of an unprecedented worldwide food crisis lasting as long as a decade, according to reports by a government contractor. And this was reported a few days ago. And no, you cannot say that this is fear mongering because this is what they're actually reporting. This is what they're actually getting ready for. But let's keep going. It says the studies published by CNA Corporation in December 2015, which we're going to go to in just a second, unreported until now, describe a detailed simulation of a protracted worldwide food crisis from 2020 to 2030. Why would they even need to do that to begin with? What are they trying to tell us? Let's keep going. It says the simulation titled Food Chain Reaction was a desktop gaming exercise involving the participation of 65 officials from the United States, Europe, Africa, India, Brazil, and key multilateral and intergovernmental organizations and institutions. The scenario for the food chain reaction simulation was created by experts brought in from the State Department, the World Bank, and agribusiness giant Cargill, along with independent specialists. CNA Corp's Institute for Public Research, which ran the simulation, primarily provides scientific research services for the Department of Homeland Security, or the DHS, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, more alphabet soups. Aren't these the same organizations that are getting ready for martial law? Aren't they preparing for all these emergencies to take place so that they can lock up American citizens into FEMA camps? Isn't that what they're getting ready for? Let's keep going. 
Now, the report goes on to say that by 2024, the scenario saw worldwide food prices spike by as much as 395 percent due to the prolonged crop failures in key food basket regions driven largely by climate change, what they call oil spike prices and confused responses from the international community. Disruptions affected developed and developing countries alike, creating political and economic instability and contributing to social unrest in certain areas. The Project's technical report states, and we're going to go over more of that in just a second. The report notes that at the end of the simulation, the teams highlighted the important role of extreme weather events and food insecurity in exacerbating instances of significant internal and external migration and social unrest. These, in turn, greatly contribute to conflict. And that's all they've been talking about is conflict, what's contributing to conflict, political unrest, economic instability. Why are they constantly talking about this if things are supposed to be getting better? What are they getting ready for? And what are they subliminally telling you is what you should be thinking about. But it even goes on to talk about national security because they're always good at talking about that. And it even talks about testing the resilience of a national security system. Isn't that what FEMA's doing? Very interesting and suspicious indeed. And I'm here at the actual website, which is foodchainreaction.org. And this is some of the findings and their recommendations that they found about this. Now, we've already gone over the first part of all the 65 leaders who came up to test this exercise and the participants and some of the findings that they found. But it even says that the game put the issue of food security at the forefront of a worldwide conversation and teams were able to see firsthand via the simulation what the future of food security could look like in an increasingly volatile world. Trade, climate, and security emerged as big issues in worldwide food security, and teams found that the actions of a few could affect the many, just like the Illuminati and how their actions of a few affect many, not to mention the Zionists at the very top. Let's keep going. As pressures increased, teams found they needed to work together to effectively deal with food security challenges. Their key findings and recommendations are below. Here are some of their key findings, and when you read between the lines, you'll see how they're preparing and getting ready for the new world order and how they're trying to merge into the one world government. That is the bigger agenda out of all of this, and they're using crises in order to do it. But some of their findings includes that instability and volatility could increase. It says food insecurity, climate, and political instability are linked, causing volatility to become the new normal, and that's exactly what they're trying to push. They're trying to push all the civil unrest and the chaos and the political unrest and the economic instability. They're trying to make that the new normal now, as we see with Brexit. It even goes on to say that climate change affects food security. And I'm not even going to get into climate change. If you would like to learn more about climate change and the lie behind it, you can watch my video below. But anyway, the so-called impacts of climate change on food security elevate the importance of climate smart agricultural. Players look to increase productivity through sustainable and innovative practices. And they love using that word sustainable, don't they? Especially the United Nations. But it even says that worldwide collaboration is essential. Don't you know what that's talking about? That's talking about merging as a new world order, the one world government. It says teams came to the conclusion that no one nation, organization, or business can successfully address worldwide food security, yet the isolated actions of few can negatively affect many. And that's one of their solutions and controlled solutions because they cause the problems is, oh, well, what we can do is come together. And that's how we can do it. We can come together and solve this problem. The problems that they cause to begin with, they as in your government, they as in your elite, they as in the Zionists who are at the very top. But it also talks about long-term solutions, information sharing, as well as agricultural research and development and how they say it's very, very critical. And if you would like to learn more about this, or if you would like to do further research into this and their actual findings, then I highly recommend you check out some of their reports that they do because here's the findings report that was reported as of February of 2016, which talks about climate conflict and worldwide food systems, which you can find more on the findings and the recommendations. If you would also like to, you can also look at the technical report that was conducted in December of 2015, which says Food Chain Reaction, a Worldwide Food Security Game, which was by Drs. Mary Kate Fisher and Dr. Yi San Yu, if you would like to learn more about this and more of what they're actually planning for.
Now, it's no surprise that they're putting out a warning such as the warning that they're putting out on worldwide food instability, just like FEMA's putting out these warnings too, because is it a surprise or coincidence that the United Nations has just so happened to declare 2016 the International Year of Pulses, which also has to do with food, which is interesting timing that they would even release that article about food, especially weeks before the Pulse movement, which is supposed to take place on July 16th, 2016, not to mention weeks after the alleged Pulse shootings that happened at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. Very interesting and suspicious indeed. But now we're going to be talking more about Brexit and the worldwide warnings that they're warning about Brexit and the worldwide economy. Because yes, the economy is much worse than 2008. Don't believe me? You're about to see in a moment. Or should it be called Brexit? Or should it really be called Rexit? Because I'm here at The Economist and it says why Brexit is grim news for the world economy. And it says uncertainty abounds. Expect a worldwide chilling effect on investment. And any time that mainstream media is telling you these things, some serious red flags should be ringing. This is not fear mongering. This is what they're actually telling you. But it goes on to say, and we're just going to skip down to it because it talks about all of the economic effects and how it affects the economy in Britain and how it even says that Britain is leading to a recession, literally, but it even goes on to say that Brexit will hurt the world economy in other ways. So not just with the economy, not just with jobs, not just with things like that in Europe itself, but also in many other ways. And it says a big concern is the extent to which a retreat from financial risk will disturb the existing fault lines in the world economy, notably in China and in Southern Europe. And we know in those places, the economy is not good either. Italy has a referendum of its own on constitutional change in October. Matteo Renzi, Italy's reform-minded prime minister, says he will resign if the result goes against him. The Brexit vote scarcely helps his chances. A widening of bond spreads in Southern Europe seems likely in the run-up to the poll. The European Central Bank, or the ECB, can intervene to swamp the symptoms of anxiety by buying bonds, but it can't do much more to cure the underlying problem of weak growth. So we already see that even the economy worldwide is going bad, and FEMA's announcing all these things worldwide, as well as a worldwide food shortage and we already see that with Venezuela what time do you think it is what do you think they're getting ready for Those of you who still think that life is going to go on and that nothing's wrong and that everything's okay it's seriously time for you to think again because I'm here at CNBC that even says that worldwide markets are plunging more than two trillion in paper wealth on Friday according to data from S&P Global the worst on record did you hear that the worst on record and the fact that it's paper wealth that's should be telling you something there too but it goes on to say for context that figure eclipsed the whipsaw trading sessions of the 2008 financial crisis according to s p analyst howard silverblatt what do you think that's telling you it's much worse than the 2008 collapse what time do you think it really is but it even goes on to say that david beckworth says that brexit is the biggest worldwide monetary shock since 2008 it's even scholars who are saying the same thing too. It's not just professional economists who are saying this, it's scholars too, because David Beckworth is a scholar from George Mason University even says, quote, that this could be the tipping point that turns the existing worldwide slowdown of 2016 into a worldwide recession, unquote. Do you hear that? What time do you think it is? What time do you think we're living in? It's time to wake up and see what's right in front of you. Even see the same cryptic warnings that are in business Business insiders too because it even says quote hello recession because even Merrill Lynch which is the wealth management team of Bank of America has even quoted saying hello recession now for those of us who are waking to truth and know exactly what's going on and know that the Zionists are behind this we know darn well that the Zionists are using Brexit and using this as one great big excuse to plummet the world economy and to start this recession worldwide we know that for a fact but how deep does the rabbit hole go is the question because the elite and the Zionists at the top, as well as the so-called experts, are even telling you what time it is. The Royal Bank of Scotland has already said to sell everything. What time do you think it is? But I'm here at Business Vancouver, which says UK departure from European Union could bode ill for the economy worldwide. And it even says...
is not only the UK sliding into recession, but as well as how this is going to have an effect on the economy, not just in Europe and worldwide. And that's exactly what they're getting ready for is that they're trying to destabilize the economy in Europe to crash the economy in Europe and then bring it to America and then follow worldwide to bring about all the civil unrest and all the political upheaval and chaos that's going to come with it. We don't know when, but we know it's only a matter of time. Please seek Yahuwah and his true son, Yahusha, so that you can be ready for everything that's to come. But hopefully you see the warning signs. This is Truth Unveiled here saying Shalom.